Hello, McDonald's Football Fan TV. This is the League of Ireland show. It's myself, Paul Nealon, and I've got Paul Tierney joining with me today because Gary just decided to go AWOL on Easter week and uh, completely um, desert us. But here we are. Um, we got straight into it, Paul. Uh, this, there was obviously a double header this week, um, plenty of games. So i kind of go through Friday night's games and then we'll go through Monday night's games and we'll kind of have an overall chat about. Um, just how teams are performing and so on because it's been a couple of weeks since we did a League of Ireland show and it's kind of hard to keep uh, doing shows when you know the fixtures are coming Friday and you're saying how bad the team are and then Monday you're saying how well they did again so kind of like Bowes this week but anyway uh, Sean McGrover's beat um, St. Pat's Athletic 1-0 at uh, Tallis Stadium uh, Rory Gaffney getting the goal there obviously then there was other shocks in the uh, in the league shells Defeating Derry after going one 0 down, uh, Derry probably unluck unlucky not to have a second goal uh, in that game. It was disallowed for whatever reason I don't know. But then a lot of Shells fans saying that the uh, the first Derry goal should have been disallowed for handball. Uh, Sligo beat Dundalk two one. Um, Bowes drew two two uh, to Finn Harps with a late uh, equaliser there for Finn Harps, and then draw the beat uh, draw uh, UCD two 0 a game I think you were at Paul. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's the the games on Friday night, and then on Monday night we had uh, our Monday, you could say, uh, shells being beaten four one by Bows. Uh, myself and yourself were both at that game. Then uh, Pats beat UCD two one. Uh, Finn Harps lost one nil to Sligo Rovers, and uh, Shamrock Rovers beat Dundalk one uh, nil. Dan Andreo's goal was enough to win that game. I was at that game as well. And then Drogheda uh, drew 1-1 one, one with Derry, which is a good result for Shamrock Rovers. Um, not a good week for Derry, I suppose, but it's kind of their first slip-up. But uh, I suppose we'll, we'll start off with Derry and just kind of the shock of Friday. You being a Shells fan, me being a Shells fan, we were obviously delighted, but um, really wasn't fancying it when I saw the fixture. I was like, oh, that's going to be a tricky one. We do well to do that. But whatever it is about playing that white kit and playing away from home, it seems to suit Shelburne so much and uh, picking up points on the road. So um, what was your initial reaction uh, from, I suppose, Derry's point of view in regarding the result? Uh, it's not a great result for Derry, really. I know they've been doing so well and it is their first slip up, but you wouldn't have expected it to come there. You would have thought it might have come against, you know, an away trip to Sligo or, you know, like even in Drada on Monday, you know, just getting a point, even though Drada actually looked quite strong. But, um, yeah, gen genuine shock, to be honest, really, for Shells. Uh, it's the first time they've scored more than one goal this season in any of the matches, which, I mean, you didn't see coming once they were 1-0 down. And uh, just in the in the media box at UCD, the general shock of the whole thing, just how quick the goals came, how quick it turned around. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic result for Shells. Obviously, we'll go on to Monday as well, and it's probably kind of been glossed over a little bit now because of that. But uh, yeah, Derry shocked and a bit of a wobble and Rovers have capitalised and uh, a bit of a wobble, but I think they'll come back and go again. I mean, it's still early as well. They're still, it's only just gone into the second round of fixtures, so it's still early, still plenty to play for. But uh, yeah, probably a bit of a wake-up call for Derry really, to be honest. Yeah, I think uh, I actually had a number of Derry fans message me uh, personally on Facebook and first they were messaging me at the shock that I didn't go up to the brand new well, but uh, unfortunately I can't be doing this all the time and can't be travelling around the length and breadth of the country all the time as much as I would love to, but maybe in the future, who knows, but they were saying you know, that it was coming for, for Derry, to be honest, uh, that result or a result like that. So uh, maybe that was to kick up the arse that they needed. Um, obviously then draw to Drogheda, who... Both teams, you would have said that Derry were favourites to win the game against. Um, but if you're looking at it, I think if you if you were a Derry City fan at the start of the season and if you had, had gathered the amount of points that you had and beaten the likes of Shamrock Rovers and Bowes quite late on in games, I think they would have taken that. So I don't think it's all doom and gloom. I think they'll they'll look at the points that they've amounted so far and I think they'll look at it and go, right, it's a positive. We're still very much in this. I think they're a point ahead of Shamrock Rovers at the moment in the table. So they're still ahead. Um, it's not like they're they've fallen behind or anything like that. They may have, you know, fallen behind maybe on their points tide. They probably foresaw before those two games because they were probably looking at them going, okay, we probably should be looking at getting six points out of these games or at least four. They ended up getting one. So, uh, yeah, disappointing week for Derry, but not uh, but a great season for them so far. And um, 
I I foresee them getting better as the season goes on. Um, then Shamrock Rovers, yeah, look at a really big result. Two really big results, really. I mean, Pats and Dundalk have been huge rivals for well, more so Dundalk uh, for Rovers in recent years, and Pats and uh, Rovers always seem to have a quite tight game. It's always it ends up being Dan Mangio getting the winning goal in those games, although it was Rory Rory Gaffney, but. In the one on Monday, Mandrea scored the goal as well. Um, in that game, I was obviously I didn't see the Pats game, but I did see the uh, the game obviously on Monday, and I felt like Rovers were always in control. Um, although uh, was it uh, Dodok had chances? Dan Kelly hits the crossbar with a header early doors, but it was kind of pinball in the box, and it was just kind of one of those where he just got up the highest and he just hit it straight off the bar. Other than that, uh, he maybe had another chance later on. I think Keith Ward had a good little uh, interaction with uh, Greg Slogger. He slept over the ball and then um, Dan Kelly gets in again. Probably should score. Alan Manis makes a big save. He has scored that. Maybe it's a different game. But the longer the game went on, you fancied that uh, Rovers were just going to get one of those um, true balls. They were constantly trying the true ball just in between the defenders and hoping that someone with a bit of pace would get on it. Aaron Green, obviously, He's getting on a bit in terms of age and legs, I would say. So he's not as quick as he probably used to be, but that's obviously expected someone his age. So then they brought on Oidmo Maku, and once they did that, then you started seeing the pace. Um, Andy Lyons came on for Sean Gannon as well. I, mean, I said as well, when you're bringing on quality like that to replace already, you know, just as equal quality um and you can bring those types of players on. And I say one of those players having a bad day and one of them comes on with a point to prove. It's such a good thing for Stephen Bradley to have. Um, so I think in that sense, you felt as if the goal was coming and then an unbelievable true ball from Jack Byrne. And then, as we said, the pace then of Mandreo. I think they were so afraid of Marcus pace that they forgot about Mandreo. And it looked like the pass was actually meant for Idemo. But uh, Dan Mandreo was kind of slow getting off. But then once he let the burners go, he was he was in and coolly finished. And uh, Stephen Braddy said he, there's not many better people you'd fancy one on one in front of goal than Dan Mandreo. So um, yeah, great goal, uh, great result as well for Rovers. Two brilliant results to put them back on course now, and it looks like they'll probably hit a good stride now uh, coming into the European games. Uh, I think it's fair enough to say. But what were your thoughts? I suppose I've rambled on there for a bit. I know it's uh, well. I, I think in terms of Rovers, the, a big result is getting that late winner out down at Tolga as well, and that that set them off for the next two games as well. Uh, it looks like they dominated both of those matches, even though they only won one nil. I've seen Dundalk once already this season. I I think they keep the ball well, but there's never really much of a threat about them. To be honest, that's what I felt at Tolga Park that night anyway as well, and it's probably the same the other night too. They'd be up against it from the get go. It's um. It's two cracking results for Rovers. It shows how good they are. It's the sign of champions as well, that they can grind out a result. They can grind out a result away and then they can get two results at home against two teams who'll be in and around them as well. So, uh, yeah, two cracking results. And good to see Danny Mandrew scoring again as well because he, he, was, he wasn't he was really in form for the last while. And other lads were getting in, other lads were getting the goals. So, uh yeah, he's a quality player, gets a lot of goals. Surprisingly, he wasn't included in the team of the season last year, even though he had a cracking season. But uh, yeah, definitely, I think Rovers are clearly the strongest team in this league. As you mentioned, they can bring on people whenever they're struggling. Someone else will have a point to prove, like you said. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's two cracking results and that sets them up now. And Derry have to react very quickly to those two results and their own two results as well. Can they do it? More than likely, but it's how long they can sustain it. I think Rovers will eventually catch up with them and it'll be down to the results Derry can get against Rovers in the next two games as well. They'll be important too. Yeah, well, I spoke with uh, Stephen Bradley and Dan Manjero after the game uh, and they're looking forward to the game against Bowes as well this Friday, so you can check that out here. So, Stephen, uh, one nil win. Things are going quite smoothly at the moment, so talk us through the game here. Yeah. I thought we were good. I, I felt they had one chance in the first half, but other than that, they, they hadn't got anything in the game. I thought we controlled the game without really cutting them open early on because they were so uh, so deep in their shape. But um, we felt that we were patient and kept moving them. We'd get the chances, and uh, thankfully, second half, we, we got our chances, and, and obviously, Danny took it. I, I did feel that uh, up until he made probably the substitutions, the triple substitutions, and it was just, he just seemed to be making 
that true ball just weren't getting on the end of them, maybe a half a, a half a yard off the yeah. ball. And then the one, obviously, Danny's pace gets him in behind here. But was that something, just that bit of pace? Just I know Aaron Green's not slow, but yeah. I was obviously rapid as well. Yeah, it was more just our timing. We, we knew the spaces were there. Like you said, we had opportunities in the first half. And we uh, the pass of the run just wasn't right. Uh, so we knew the space were there and we just had to keep uh, probing and, and it would open up and thankfully Jack plays a great ball and, and Danny one on one, you fancy him every day of the week. Mm. I know, I, I say it to you every week, it's just the strength of sports on the table, but like you said with the so when you're bringing on players like Andy Noyes, taking off players like Sean McGann, most of them would start for any team in the league. It's just nice to have that I suppose on, on, your, on your squad and then you can just bring them on and they obviously help get off teams just to add the quality. Mm. You know, I would say in your perspective they're probably like for like but yeah. I mean just the qualities of the label that you bring on. Yeah well, look we've had to work extremely hard to get to a level where we have a squad like this um, and, and we feel that whoever starts or yeah, comes on is, is equal to the player that's playing so uh, the squad are pushing each other every week they're brilliant in terms of uh, one comes off next man, next man on to carry the baton uh, they're fantastic in that way and, and tonight we've seen that again uh, the subs came on and gave us real energy Oidemo came on and, and uh, was fantastic, I don't know, you know, he probably could have had one or two goals when he came on. He was very, very good. And he ended up getting uh, Wingarten sent off as well. And, uh, as well. But, yeah. but I suppose just from a league perspective now, you know, to dock over the years would have been a good tone on your side, especially. Um, let's get one over there now tonight, because it rising up the league. Derry tripping up a little bit now, so uh, things are looking up for you guys. Yeah, look, we were really calm. I thought the fourth round was a good return for us. Um, and we can, we know it's a long season, we know there's a lot that can happen um, and we felt we were getting in our stride and uh, I think we've shown that the last few weeks but we'll only get stronger and better as the season goes um, and, and we've seen that over the last few years and, and I don't expect this season to be any different. Mm. I was saying earlier to, to keep on, it's one of those things where it's just people in the front of the games, you can't really dwell on games too much before you go and you have another one. Is that a positive or a negative in, in your view because you don't have time to kind of think about the yeah. next game and there's a way of bouncing back more so I suppose. Yeah, well it's obviously a positive if you've dropped points but um, it can be a negative if, if, if you want to review games because you haven't got the time, you, you need to refresh and focus on the game in front of you. Uh, but overall it's a positive, you want to play games and uh, and we all know the schedule before the season starts, it's good, we like it. Uh, ask any player, any fan, you just want to see games. Mm. I suppose you're hitting a nice stride now when it's somewhere European games. So yeah, I suppose you just want to keep the momentum at this stage now. Yeah, uh, this group has shown the last few years we get stronger as the season goes. Um, and like I said, that's our aim this year again. Um, get stronger as it goes. We're getting there. We still have a few levels to go, but we're definitely getting there. Danny? 1-0 win, you've scored a match winner. Um, I was just saying to Stephen there, a lot of those passes in the first half, you were, you were just half a second off or half a yard off. And it just seemed like it was coming. Is that something you've just been targeting? Those, just those little balls in the... I you know Jack can do that. I know when Jack and Dylan are the boys get on the ball, I just make them make them runs and they will find me. So it happened a few times tonight. I said it didn't come off, but finally it came off in the second half. So but I'm delighted with the with the goal. I'm delighted with the win. Mm. I've just looked at it. Just not listening to the squad. Like I was here the other week, and just some of the players, like some of the players were happy weren't even playing today, and it, you wouldn't have even noticed that they weren't playing because you had players like yourself come in, Aaron Green came in. Yeah. Um, that was actually against Shells. So then he's had players like that come yeah. in. And then you know Richie wasn't starting mm. at, uh, tonight, but he was starting last week yeah. and stuff like that. You have so many like for like players. The quality doesn't seem to drop. It must be so enjoyable for you Just, to, to come in and play with because he, although you might not always yeah, be playing, yeah, yeah. he's still coming on and making a difference. He did against Shells as well. So the, I think that's the difference yeah. here. The squad is, as you can see for yourself, the squad is unbelievable. And Oidmo came on, young lad, got a man sent off. He was running around like a, he was in the peak of his life. But uh, yeah, the, the squad is unbelievable. It's great to play with these big names, Richie, Jack, all the boys, uh, Rory. It's brilliant. Yeah, no, because I did say that to, to Stephen was that part of the game plan to bring Oidemo on for that, that added bit of pace. Not that uh, Aaron Green slow, but obviously yeah. Oidemo was rapid. I think, the, I think they got tired as well at the end and bringing fresh young young legs on worked and. Uh, yeah, as I said, we're just delighted to get the win. Mm. I think he opened up the space for you then to make that run because you were a bit you were a bit slow starting off, but you had the pace to get in. And, yeah, I was yeah. five yards deep, and uh, I thought Jack was going to play the Ironman, but luckily he played it to me. So, yeah, uh, there was, was one here, and uh, I think I didn't start that deep. I was on the line, so yeah, that's why I didn't make it. You, yeah. He wasn't happy with me. Now he's on my own bag, but <laughs> sure, listen. Yeah, well, I just like 
obviously oh, in recent years Dundalk have been the main main threat to, yeah. to Shamrock Rovers, but now it just seems like that the, it's going head to head with Derry and Pats and yourselves. So I suppose at this stage Stephen said he's quite happy with the return of points. Would you be happy with so far? Because the games come so quick and fast that before you know yeah. it, it's like yeah, it's a bit it's a busy schedule as uh, the league is a lot tougher this year I think, and uh, anyone can anyone can win the league. Uh, so yeah, we have Bowers on Friday now. Would that be another tough game? Mm. One. Uh, all the lads are looking forward to and I'm looking forward to myself. Mm. I think as well though anyone could beat anyone. Like I was at the game today with Charles and, and Bowles and <coughs> Bowles ended up winning 4-1. If you hadn't said that on Friday, with the results yeah. going the way they, they did, I was even saying to Keith Long, like, is it a is it a positive that the games come so quick because uh, you know if you lose a game on a Friday, you win a game on a Monday, it's forgotten about kinda in a way, you know? Yeah, that's a that's a positive thing, I think. Uh, I'd rather play games than train, to be honest. So <laughs> uh, it's football, isn't it? Everyone has busy periods, and yeah, um, yeah, it's football, isn't it? What yeah. can you do? You can't do anything about it. You need to just get on with it. Yeah, I said to Stephen there, he seems to be around this kind of time. He's, he's tend to hit your stride going into the European games. Good time to start hitting your stride Definitely. and start getting the results. Did it last year as well. We had a slow start, and I think it's just getting the mix right now. I think the mix is right. Whoever comes on, whoever doesn't play, comes on, comes on, does well. I think we're only going to get better and better. So. Hopefully we continue the form. Yeah, you know you'll be looking forward to a big fixture uh, on uh, Friday night anyway. So best luck and thanks for your time, Eric. Cheers, thank you. So. All right, uh, yeah, I suppose we'll just keep going down the table. Uh, St. Pat's uh, disappointing result against Rovers, as we we touched over there from from Rovers' point of view, it was a great result for them. Not so much uh, St. Pat's, but I still think they're a kind of team on the on the up and a team that are kind of still trying to find their feet from last season so to be still third where they are at the moment they got a good result against UCD uh, 2-1 against uh, UCD at the UCD Bowl <coughs> on Monday so I would have said that that uh, result against Pats was expected to be honest with you um, or sorry against uh, UCD for Pats I would have thought that was an expected victory for them I think Pats would be naturally a stronger, a stronger side they have uh, quality. Obviously, we know Colin Whelan has quality scored in the game as well. Uh, ben McCormick's a good young player. He got on the score sheet as well. Um, the thing about Pats is they are just a young emerging side at the moment. Uh, I wouldn't say they're a finished article by any stretch of the imagination. They they obviously are still trying to rebuild from the Stephen, O'Don- Stephen O'Donnell, I would say, era. Although it wasn't that long, but you know what I mean. Like They were starting to come on strong there. They were building a good team. And then half of that team left. They've got players in. Uh, team Clancy have brought in a lot of players from Drogheda who seem to really suit and work well with him. So I think to be where Pats are at the moment in the league, I do not think is a, a bad thing at all for them. I think they'd be quite happy actually that they're sitting in third. They still feel like they're within a chance of winning the league. I don't think they are myself. But time will tell on that and if maybe they can add more players in the summer break uh, for the transfer window then maybe we could see Pats really kick on the second half of the season again you've got to factor all these things into it like Europe and stuff like that I don't think Derry have Europe um, correct me if I'm wrong I don't think Derry have Europe to worry about so that might actually help them but like Pats and Sligo who are obviously fourth as well they're, they're kind of similar teams at this moment in time where they tend to lose their better players and they're just always trying to kind of make up for it then as the season kind of goes on. Bowes are kind of like that in a way as well. Most, most of the teams are, but like teams like Derry and Rovers won't be now because they've got cash behind them. Yeah, definitely. I think it's it's a good result for Pats considering they did lose on Friday and they were one down as well in the game on uh, Monday as well. So that's got to be said. Um, it, yes, it's it's hard for them. Like Clancy's coming down. It's another... He's got, Coming to another big club, I know draw there a big club as well. Pat's probably that tiny bit bigger, but um, yeah, there's a lot of pressure on them. There's new lads; they've moved down. You know, the likes of Mark Doyle. Okay, he hasn't been fantastic so far, but you know, it's it's new for them as well. A lot of the draw the lads as well, and they're coming out of like being mid table and kind of just expected to finish there, finishing the lower reaches of the table to Pat's who were second last year and. We're up with Rovers for a good good chunk of the season and done well, done well as well. Obviously, won the cup too, which is great for them. But uh, yeah, I think with Pats as well, they're still reeling a bit from that whole egg, the exit with O'Donnell, just the way it went down. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but 
it seemed like it wasn't very smooth anyway, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, look, Tim's come in. He's done a decent enough job. They're third. I mean, Derry have been excellent. They've probably been the form team so far. So there's no shame in being behind them. And Rovers can turn it on whenever they want, really. So yeah, it's 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 tough. It's it's tough for Patson, but I think they've done okay. Listen, if if they if you'd said they'd be third after the first round of games, they probably would have taken that as well, and still within touch and distance of the two ahead of them. So it's it's not by means bad, but maybe it's like oh, we can do a little bit better in some of the games. And uh, look, it was an important win considering they were one down as well, and they did lose on Friday. So uh, yeah, definitely. And in terms of UCD, I've seen them a couple of times. They've been unlucky a couple of couple of times not to get the win against Shells at home they probably should have won Bowles at home they definitely should have won uh, Sligo away late goal denied them the first three points of the season uh, I think the main thing for them is Colin Wynn has got a couple of goals in the last few games because once he gets goals once he gets scoring particularly at home I think they'll get a couple of results and uh, okay obviously they lost the draw them Friday was at that one as well bit unlucky but uh, look, they, they need a win soon. There's, there's no two ways about it. They need a win soon. But I think there's every chance of that come very soon once you keep wheeling scoring. And uh, I know Kerrigan was dropped on Monday. Maybe he had a bit of a knock. He went off early on Friday as well. But uh, look, when you have those two lads in the team, you are going to get results eventually. So, I mean, it's not all doom and gloom, but it is getting a bit worrying. Mm, I, I disagree with the... The argument that the two of them are going to win you games, I think they'll they'll be off for the summer, and I think UCD will mm. really struggle then. But yeah, look, obviously we know that they're both quality, and they're obviously there, and they're, um, well, how would I put it, academical skills uh, more than their football skills. I think they'll be once they sort all that stuff out. I think they'll be on playing for mm. a top team, you know. There, I I foresee actually, um, I foresee. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Colin Whelan going to Rovers. I I could see mm-hmm. that happening, or across the water, um, and Kerrigan maybe as well. Kind of similar to Farouge and O'Neill going to uh, Rovers there a few years back. But uh, that's kind of what happened when UCD came up. Unfortunately for them, like it's a struggle for them to hold on to players. I know, but they do produce so many good players uh, so often. So credit to them for that. But um, they're not really going to offer that much. I don't think for the league if they're going to sell the players halfway through and mm-hmm. then just be kind of like a bottom tier team that you know every other team can go all right we, we can plan for the playoffs now because they're going to be worse than us now i know yeah people probably don't want to hear that but that's kind of the way people are looking at it i would say um but yeah look uh we, um, well, we don't need to talk about ucd later on now because we've started we've spoken about yeah them, but, um oh, yeah yeah, I will say one thing. Losing Paul Doyle was a massive one for them as well. I saw them a lot last year, and I think he gives them a bit of, bit of grit in the midfield, which they sometimes don't have. And uh, Jack Keeney, their captain, he's out injured now for a while. He had, he had a cast on his wrist the other day. He wasn't playing, but he was just... I think he was just doing a bit of, bit of fitness work because he can still run, but obviously you can't play with a cast. So I don't know how long he's going to be out for, but he's he's a big lost of them as well and uh, just just to mention as well there was a decision on Friday for draw this first goal that Adriano Real gave a peno first of all it didn't hit Sean Brennan's hand and second of all it wasn't in the box so you, they can feel a bit aggrieved by that but draw they were pressing at the time so like it, it, the goal was coming it's just the way it came they'd be a bit aggrieved about it but uh yeah, I, I take your point about UCD anyway. And uh, yeah, the, unfortunately, it looks like they'll, those lads will be off in the summer. If not the summer, then before next season anyway, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. Um, I suppose we'll move on to... Uh, so, oh, well, you spoke to uh, Kev Doherty, didn't you, after that game? I did. Paul Tierney here, joined by Kevin Doherty after draw this 2-0 win at the ball. Kevin, how'd you feel after that? Big three points. Yeah, delighted. Um, second half, really good performance, up the intensity, up the... Probably the, the threat we were we just thought we were lacking a little bit of it in the first half, the intensity. So we did a bit, a little bit of half time, and obviously made made a change and a little bit of a, even a couple of positional changes within it. So yeah, really, really happy with the result. It's it's an excellent result. But I said to everyone before the game, UCD were excellent last week against Sligo, and look, we knew we we're going to have a job in our hand. But lucky enough, we were able to carry it out. 
Yeah, and uh, any standout performances for you, or was it? Uh, ah, look, real yeah, be loud. It's like, yeah, there was obviously like, I think they were all really, really good. Second half in particular, they were all really good. So I wouldn't uh, pick anyone else. Yeah, and um, I was going to say sorry. Did you have a view on the penalty at all? From my side, I, it looked a bit dodgy, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, I don't know about the one that we got there, like, but we. To, like I think we should have had one a couple of minutes earlier to be honest we had a penalty given against us so I mean if you want to say if, if, if it is soft which I don't know certainly the other one was a penalty so sort of cancels out we'd one given against us last week very similar so wouldn't worry about it but, but having said that second half the chances we had and Dale Rooney hit the crossbar Ryan Brennan on a one on one like he, he, uh, Healy's made a great save from Ryan as well so I think they had one chance with, with Sam made a great save from to be fair but I thought chances created we, we, we more deserved it we obviously got the second goal then as well yeah and finally have Derry up next there beaten tonight looking forward to that one on Monday yeah we're an animal as someone else just said to me there but look we, we'll rest and as much as we can over the weekend and recover and prepare for Derry but it's very important that we didn't even with team selection tonight there was nothing even Derry didn't even come into my mind until the final whistle went so we'll, we'll, we'll uh, prepare for them now as I said they'll be coming down now Obviously, after losing their first game, they'll be looking to, to bounce back and look, we'll have to try and see what we can do against them. Yeah, brilliant, Kevin. Thanks no very much. Yeah, just mi- just moving on to, to Sligo then, because um, it's kind of hot uh, in and around that area there between 4th and uh, and 6th, between Sligo, Dundalk and Bowles. And kind of, you would at the start of the season been thinking that those, te- those teams would have been there or thereabouts, especially with Derry spending money. So I think the league table doesn't really, it, there's no like surprises there. I think uh, everyone is kind of, stacked where you would have kind of stacked them earlier in the season um you know Sligo just Pip and Dundalk and Bowes at the moment but Bowes only a point off um fourth place considering everyone going on about Keith Long should be sacked and how he's having such a poor season um so I'd foresee now now going forward that they'll have a, a, a decent enough season but Sligo um going well I suppose it wasn't ideal in some games for them um, shells being won because they were going well and that kind of knocked the stuff in them out a bit. Uh, Dundalk, again, I just, I just don't understand. Sometimes like he had Dan Kelly playing as the centre forward against um, Rovers. I understand from a pace point of view, but I just, I just found it a bit odd because um, he's obviously not that good at holding the ball up and stuff like that. Great, great at getting in behind. But Pat Huben having uh, scored on Friday night. I would have thought he would have been a better option to have, but maybe he was carrying a knock or, or something like that, but he did come on late on. Um, but Dundalk, they do look a bit nervous as well. I mean, Dara Lee, he looks like he's really lacking in confidence. He gave the ball away so many times on um, Monday. And it like simple passes that you, you just look at someone and you go, you know, is his manager constantly on his case? Because he it just always looked like he was going to give a bad pass. I don't know what it was because he is a really good player. And, you know, we've seen him play for the Ireland under-21s, we've seen him play with Dundalk, and he just, for whatever reason, he just looks to be all over the place. But I suppose just rather than going in and around all the teams, we'll just kind of talk about that kind of 4-6 to six spot and, you know, balls with a great result against Shells. Um, and I think that's really propelled them back up and maybe got supporters back on board. Yeah, well, I think you look at those three teams and you can say they're all very inconsistent. Sligo had a good start, but I think they've struggled with the pitch down there. They can't seem to get it right after the snow that called off their first game of the season. And they've had a couple of results. Like, they drew at UCD. They were 2-1 behind. They got a draw in the end. They lost 1-0 to uh, to Shells to, and to Bowles as well. And they're two bad results against teams who who are in and around them as well. And that their results, Sligo... You know they were get they were winning those games last year really if you think about it down especially down at home but they obviously ha- they're having problems with the pitch uh, in terms of Dundalk I mean I saw them I thought they're they're lacking a bit of something they're lacking a bit of the finished article I mean the goal they got against Shells and I, I saw them was the only chance they had all game and it was it was it was from a set piece as well so they didn't really create any clear cut chances um, and in terms of balls I've seen them a couple of times they were woeful against UCD. I thought they had it very handy on Monday against Shells as well. And even still, they looked like they could have conceded a few more goals and probably should have. You think of Jordan McIniff's chance to header, which he should have done better with. And Sean Boyd had a good chance as well uh, after he scored. It was in the second half and he kind of hit it with the outside of his foot and it just went by the post where he, he probably should have buried it. And you, you look at it then, if Shells get those two goals, it's 4-3 and it's, it's really, really tight. I thought 
some of the goals they got on Monday as well were soft defensively. I know Liam Burt was stunning for some of the goals, but like he, he ran from near enough to the halfway line once. No one near him, like, and it's just it was too soft. But listen, you have to take those chances. And Bowles did on Monday. Keith Long was under a bit of pressure. He got a result. Now they go into Rovers off the back of a win, which they'll be more confident with. They're at home as well. They do have a good record against Rovers at home normally. So, uh, yeah, in terms of... There are three teams who are very similar. You can't really pick between them. They're just inconsistent. And, I mean, they get result one week, they lose the next week. So they once they stop doing that, they'll move on a bit. But... I mean, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen Dundalk and Bowes anyway. And I haven't been overly impressed. And just looking at Sligo's results and hearing some of their fans, they're not happy either, really. So it was important they got the win on Monday as well against Harps. But uh, yes, I mean, it, it's it's tough to tell. Teams in transition as well, as you've mentioned, they've sold a lot of players as well. So it's it's, it's hard for them. It's hard for them. Yeah, no, I would agree. I spoke with Keith Long after the Shells game. Anyway, you can hear what he had to say. Apologies for the Seagulls in the background, but I just couldn't control them. Uh, Keith, congratulations. Uh, 4-1 win here at Talker Park. Uh, it hasn't been easy for teams, I suppose, against Shells uh, so far. You're not know, playing them earlier in the season, but 4-1, uh, after, I suppose, a little bit of a, a difficult spell recently, but it's good for you to bounce back now. Yeah, very good. Like you said, um, Shelburne have been very good, very competitive. Um, uh, their home form has been... You know, has been hasn't been you know quite as good as their away form, um, uh, but they're very organised, young, energetic, hungry team, and uh, coming on the back of a good result up in Derry, a brilliant result up in Derry. You know, they would have felt coming into today's game that we were there for the take, and particularly when you know some of the, our own results haven't gone the way we would have liked. Um, so it was a pleasing performance, particularly the, you know we, in quick su- succession. Um, we've been able to bounce back, which which was important for us to, you know, answer some of the, you know, I suppose um, negativity that's been around, you know, Dalyman Park, and and you know, as a result of, of our performances, our results, you know, I think if I'm being brutally honest with you, that was probably coming a little bit. I think some of our performances recently have been better, you know, and uh, but we're we're 11 games into the season, like you know what I mean. It's a funny league so far. Um, I said last week that m- most managers, I would imagine, are disappointed with their points return uh, 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 to, to this point in the season. So um, I stand by that. I, I think we can improve as a team. I think we'll get better uh, as confidence comes back into the group. And obviously today is a is a confidence boosting performance and result. Yeah, I, I mean, the other night people are very looking at that almost as a loss it was a 2-2 draw you didn't you, know, you lost you conceded two points but you didn't lose the game kind of the way people were going on but I suppose from your point of view it was good to bounce back and then you'd goal scores from all over the pitch which I imagine yeah. would give your players a lot of confidence now going forward well I hope so uh, yeah I think today's performance was, was it was a positive display and it was, it was important to bounce back after Friday night and like you said we didn't lose but it felt like a defeat you know um, obviously the last kick of the game to concede a goal having you, you know dominated the game um, albeit that they were down to 10 men and then 9 men for, for the final minute you know so we didn't quite take our chances we weren't as clinical or as ruthless as we were in front of goal today uh, last week in Drada we did something similar bossed the game probably dominated possession created some chances maybe not as many as we did on Friday as not as many as we did today but we didn't take them when they came our way and that leaves us a little bit vulnerable so um, you know all I can do is uh, you, you know thank the players for, for how they've reacted, their positivity over the weekend, because it can be difficult coming into the dressing room, um, you know, to find the right words um, and the, how the players feel. Um, they were they were hugely disappointed after recent, um, uh, I suppose, results. Performance-wise, can we improve? Of course, we're always looking to, to improve performances. And I thought today was a great game for us in that regard a Dublin derby you know both both teams committed and I think we showed we, we capitalised on, on, on some, some errors by the opposition and we showed our quality when we needed to but also you know we showed that little bit of resilience you know we, we won our duels won our battles won our 1v1s and I think that was important for us today as well to give us a platform in the game I think the fact that the games come so quick and fast it can be sometimes a negative but also sometimes a positive like for example you know the, the game Friday you come back like yeah. they win 4-1 Shells for example they go beat Derry and then they come here and lose 4-1 it's yeah, just it's going to like that isn't it it's football you know so we should never be surprised certainly in this league you know strange things happen um, you know we, we lost the game recently in, in against Derry late 
um, in the in the game um, when we probably felt we, we we deserved to hang on or deserved to get a point, but we followed that up with a really good performance down in Sligo with a one 0 win. Um, so we were able to do that today. Can we do it again on Friday in another Dublin derby against Shamrock Rovers? You know, we just have to make sure that we manage our recovery, do everything that we can, live like monks, make sure that we're ready for Friday night. So um, Rovers play this evening against Dundalk, so um, it gives us an opportunity maybe to have a look at that. And uh, we know they're a quality side with quality players. It doesn't matter who comes into their eleven, um, you know, and they're winning games. So we've got to get, you know our performance levels right for Friday and to try and make sure that we have a go and, and get up against Rovers in, in the derby. Passionate home support, travelling away support. It was great to have that here today. It's a it's a long time since I've been in Talca Park, you know, with a crowd so full. Um, you know, Shell supporters right behind their team, both supporters behind our team and I think that's what the league desperately needs and it'll be something similar on Friday night. Mm. Well, just uh, the fact that on the Friday night we're both in a rush to get the talent now, so uh, I'll leave it there. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Right. Cheers. Thank you. Then just kind of breaking it up uh, to the bottom four, you've got uh, Drogheda, uh, Shells, Finn Harps in UCD. Um, obviously the big win for Shells helped them climb uh, a bit above away from Finn Harps uh, and Drogheda are going well, you'd have to say as well, considering... Um, a lot of people were fancy shells to be above them at this stage so far. I used to be at the bottom of four, which we already spoke about. But um, draw it. You saw them against UCD, and then they got a good draw against uh, Derry. So how, how have they gone? I don't think I've been to a draw the game this season so far. But uh, I thought they were impressive on Friday. The first half was a bit nip and tuck. There was no clear cut chances at all. But then he made a change at half time. He bought, brought Ryan Brennan on. And immediately he, he had a shot, a half volley, which nearly went over Lorcan Healy's head. Would have been a wonder goal. And uh, then soon after that, Dale Rooney hit the bar from a free kick. And you kind of felt the goal was coming for them. They were dominating. The likes of Gary Deegan and Georgie Point in the midfield, they were just stronger than the UCD midfielders. And that's ultimately what got them through in the end. Uh, they got two goals at the right times as well. Now, I did mention previously it wasn't a penalty for uh, the handball by Sean Brennan. It wasn't even a handball and it wasn't in the box either. But uh, yeah, look, sometimes you get that and they probably just needed to get a goal. It was coming, but it shouldn't have come in the way it did. Chris Lyons has got three this season. I mean, he's a decent decent player for the league as well. He does get a couple of goals. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're stronger than I thought they would be. They set up well. They've got a strong midfield. We know from seeing Gary Deegan, Georgie Point, and Dale Rooney and Ryan Brennan, they're all very, very good players and very well experienced in the top division as well. So, uh, yet yeah, they were strong. I was impressed with them. I actually thought UCD were going to win on Friday from the start. But, um, yeah, no, I mean, two good results for Jod as well. But they've got a couple of good results so far this season. So it's no surprise, really. And even... They played Rovers as well at the start of the season. And from what I've heard of that, they were the better side for a lot of it as well. So they're looking confident for a team I thought would be struggling so far this season. And uh, fair play to them, you know, and fair play to Kevin Doherty. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't have been singing his praises at the start. But, I mean, they've started very strong. Well, stronger than we thought they would have anyway, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I think you, you, you forget that some of the players that they have there will get you through games, you know, you have players there like Dane Massey and you've got Gary Deegan, senior pros, who, you know, rub off of the rest of the team. And it's no surprise there to see players from Shells there last year who would have played with Deegan, who maybe he said, you know, get these lads in, they're good players, players like Dale Rooney, players like Georgie. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, there's no real surprise there for me. Like, they look like a good team. I, I reckon that they will stay up and I think it could be a... a, a a stage where it's just between Finn Harps and UCD. Uh, but then again, it's Shelburne and we know from a few seasons ago that you can't get too complacent either because you'll end up in a playoff spot and before you know it, you're in the first division again. So Shells need to be wary of that. Obviously, fantastic result against Drogheda, but then to go and lose to your uh, nearest and, and most bitter rivals in Bowes it's not a it's not a good look for for the club. I don't think you know as as much of a good result it was on on Friday to then follow it up with with a real disappointing display on on Monday. And just as you say, you know, a couple of the goals were were fairly shells' fault. They weren't necessarily Bowes being unbelievable. It was just kind of silly little error, silly penalty. The first goal catalogue of errors deflected in, and that kind of set the tone then. 
Um, never really offered too much as well going forward. Once it got to the midfield, lost for ideas. Um, but then again, when you look at when Brian McManus came on the other night, he was brilliant. He got a great goal against uh, Derry and um, Shane Farrell as well had been in good form. He actually, I thought he had a decent game against Bowles, yeah. but was was clutching his straws because he had nothing really around him helping him out. Uh, Sean Boyd got a good goal, but and he he's he's still adding goals to his tally, which in fairness you, you can't really argue too much. I still think Dan Carr doesn't do enough for the Shells team, and I don't think he deserves to start because he doesn't run around. Um, and put in a lot of effort to say the way boy does boy doesn't necessarily run around like a madman but he puts himself about whereas i find Carr, he just he's, he, yeah. he's very he's just very lazy in my opinion um i just he, as a center forward you want your center forward to set the tone and if it's all about this pressing and you know getting players forward he just doesn't do enough of it for me but look if if damien duff is happy with him then damien duff is happy with him but i think um Obviously, there was a reason why he didn't start against Bowles because he wouldn't have given us too much. But I just thought on the day, they were better than us. We were poor. Uh, and Shells will bounce back from it, I'm sure. Uh, but it'll be a tough game against Dundalk away. But then again, you would have said the same thing about Derry. So look, uh, it's if, if you were to say at this stage that uh, Shells be where they were, you wouldn't have been surprised. But you probably want maybe to be above Drogheda and trying to drive up the table. But then again, there's the summer transfer window. And I think maybe Damien Duff will be able to attract a few players uh, as well to the club. And there should be some money there to get some, some new players in and, and maybe some quality just to get us uh, some results. So... Yeah, I think uh, in regards to the league table and stuff like that, Finn Harps maybe struggling a bit, but you never know with them. They could go on a mad run. They're just that type of side. Uh, but yeah, I think the league table, there's no real surprises there. I think everything really is as it is. And uh, we'll just move on briefly onto the, the first division. Uh, yeah, then onto the first division then. Um, Friday night's games saw Galway beat Waterford 1-0, which was a massive result for Galway. Bad result for Waterford, obviously. Cove, uh, Cove being beaten 4-2 by Wexford. Uh, 0-0 between Cork and Bray. And then Treaty drew 1-1 with Athlone away from home. Gary Spain is probably happy with that point. Um, I haven't been speaking to him, so I don't even know if he is. Then uh, on Monday, Cork got a massive result in the Munster Derby um, between the two clubs. Um, they won 2-1 there at the RSC. Then uh, Bray lost one, or sorry, lost two one to Longford. Um, I'm sure uh, Gary Cronin was happy with that one. And mm. then, uh, just one sec. Then um, Cove Ramblers beat uh, Athlone three two, and then Treaty won two one against Wexford. So there's all the results there. Uh, we're just going to move to the table. Um, Cork are obviously winning there, winning the league. They've played 10 games. A few of the teams below haven't played as many, but they're on 23 points. Um, Galway underneath them there, 20 points, played 9. Longford eight, played 8 and have 17. So they've got two games in hand, uh, which could, you know, they could go joint top there if they win those two games. Uh, 3D have played 9, have 15 points. Waterford played 10 and have 14 points. I'm sure that's quite disappointing for them. Um, and then, who else have you got? You've got uh, Wexford, ten uh, played 10, have 11 points. And then you have uh, Bray Wanderers, 10 points from 10 games. 7 points from 10 games for Cove. And then uh, 2 points from 10 games for Athlone. So... Uh, yeah, no real surprises in the league. I think uh, maybe Longford could be if they win those games, but otherwise, and, and Waterford probably drop them, but otherwise, I'd say it's fairly uh, what you would have expected. Yeah, definitely. Maybe Waterford could have been doing a bit better. They've had a bit of a slump recently. Um, Cork and Galway at the top, that'll be a bit of a scrap for who wins it. Galway obviously beat Cork as well in the first match they played against each other this season, 1 0 down the Turner's Cross. I mean, we know what to expect from John Caulfield's sides. Uh, strong defensively and generally solid, but can can win a game away from home against anyone. Even in the top division, they could beat anyone away. He's just a good manager like that, and his teams really, really show his style of play, definitely. I've seen Cork once this year. They won 6-0 out in Bray. They just have a lot of firepower, Cork. That's it. And, I mean, you could see them, you know, even if they were 2-0 down, they could come back and win 3-2 against a couple of teams, which is 
good going. Uh, treaty, I mean, they constantly overachieve. Gary, like we always talk about them, like the fact that they got into the playoffs last year, had a very, very good season, and are right up there again. And they'll be looking to get into those playoffs again this season. Uh, Gary Crown at Longford, it's basically Bray's team from last year, besides a few up there now as well. I always thought they were strong enough whenever I saw them. So look, they've got an upper, they've got those two games in hand. Obviously, rather the points, but look, they're well up there and they're looking for it to come back straight come straight back up after a disappointing year last year. But um yeah, Cork looks strong. I've only seen the months. I've seen highlights of the couple of a couple of their games, but they do look strong and uh Aaron Howie will be delighted with that obviously. But um yeah, Waterford I think are the most disappointing so far. They started all right and they've just had a bit of a collapse. And uh obviously with Ian Morris being there, he'll be hoping to get it right soon. Yeah, that's a, I haven't got too much to say on the first division because I haven't seen too many games. Generally, I leave it up to Gary because he's at first division games all the time watching Treaty. So um, we'll talk a bit more about the first division maybe next week. But uh, in regards to the rest of the show, I think that's uh, pretty much it. So huge thanks to Paul for, for joining me as ever. And um, let us know your thoughts, whoever you support and how your team going so far. We're obviously coming up to the mid-season break now soon enough. Um as the summer approaches, you know, uh, would you be happy with your points tally coming into that so far? Or are you disappointed? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.